This is The Caretaker, and you are listening to The Graveyard Show. Welcome to The Graveyard. And welcome to another edition of the Graveyard Show Podcast. I am your caretaker, and the graveyard is open. Well, it's great to reopen the graveyard after, uh, well, it's been quite some time since my last show. And, uh, well, I wound up coming across some, uh, well, I had some off time coming my way. Unexpected, and for a very specific number of days. Let's just put it that way. Um, but yes, uh, after two and a half years, it was my turn to go away for a while. Let's just put it that way. But thankfully, all is well. I am here. I am back and ready to go for another edition of the Graveyard Show podcast. So I wanted to get a new show up uh, as soon as I was ready to go. And the time is now. Now, um, I know that I haven't had a show up for a little while. But if you are a subscriber to the Graveyard Show YouTube channel... Uh, well, you would have found some new uh, stuff that I put up there. So you see, it's very important, even if you listen to the show as a podcast, to subscribe to the Graveyard Show Podcast YouTube channel uh, because there is other stuff that I put up there. And, um, of course, I have uh, the Catacombs of Horror shows up there and the link to the new Catacombs of Horror YouTube channel as well. Uh, I have the George A. Romero wing on YouTube. All Things George Romero is uh, in that playlist. I have BC's Video Vault. All of the Brian Collins movie reviews from the Graveyard Show podcast back in 9 and 10. And now, uh, adding to that, um, well, uh, the show itself, the Graveyard Show podcast, was uh, originally online from 2009 to 10. And back in those days when podcasting was uh, for us common folk uh, and before all the celebrities found out what they were missing and took over (laughs) the podcasting world, um, there was just uh, those of us out there doing our shows. And one of the things that was created in the horror podcasting world was the very short-lived horror podcasting network. And it was created... um, to get all of us horror podcasters uh, to be under one roof and you would go to the website and it would have all of our shows and um, we would also cross promote each other's shows. So we all did promos for our own shows and then we passed them on everybody and then, you know, uh, we would all put uh, some of those promos on our podcasts. So I have on my hard drive all of these uh, horror promos from uh, all of these shows from back in 2009 and 10. Uh, Most of them, sadly enough, I think, are no longer with us. And um, I thought it would be fun to upload those to YouTube. And uh, I grabbed a whole bunch of them, and I've been uh, uploading them in uh, little groups. So I think right now there are about three of them. Uh, There will probably be about seven or eight of them. And then, uh, of course, I have my old Graveyard Show podcast promos that I'll put up. And then I came across some other stuff as well where uh, I was a guest uh, on some other uh, horror podcast. So uh, subscribe to the Graveyard Show podcast YouTube channel and you too will be notified when all of this new fun stuff is uploaded to the channel. All right, let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, the email address is gyspodcast at gmail.com. That's caretaker is awesome at gmail.com. You can send me your thoughts, comments, and uh, if you're part of the horror community and have something to promote, please do not hesitate to reach out as well. All right, let's get to news notes and uh, some of my thoughts as well on the art of movie posters. But first, let's start with the news. I am happy to announce that uh, Weary Pines uh, is currently hard at work with their latest score for In Search of Darkness Part 3. Yes, the boys are back. Uh, Jamie Chambers uh, confirmed that he and Don McLennan Jr., also known as Weary Pines, uh, have returned for the second sequel uh, of the In Search of Darkness franchise. And they are pushing themselves musically for this film. 
Uh, on a side note, uh, I will say that it looks like In Search of Darkness Part 3 uh, will be available for purchase somewhere around October. And uh, as soon as I get those details, I will certainly share that with you. Uh, but also a reminder to check out Weary Pines website uh, to purchase their complete soundtracks to the 1980s super documentaries In Search of Tomorrow as well as In Search of Darkness 1 and 2. And of course you can find all of their work on their website wearypines.com that is w e a r y p i n e s.com wearypines.com and you can also stream them on your favorite music sites as well. I know the boys um, really appreciate that because it certainly helps with the algorithm and uh, gets them out there more in the world of streaming. Now, speaking of In Search of Darkness and In Search of Tomorrow, the director of those films, David Weiner, has informed me that there's going to be a flash sale for the 1980s sci-fi super documentary In Search of Tomorrow. And it's going to run from July 21st through August 7th. Now, to find out more, go to 80sscifidoc.com. That is 80sscifidoc.com for details. And um, I will keep reminding everyone as the weeks go by and the shows go by to check that out as well. And um, now for me, I've purchased uh, two of those three films. I didn't get the uh, first one when it first came out, uh, but I do own a digital copy. However, um, I did get In Search of Tomorrow in the early stages of crowdfunding. And uh, in a little while, I'm going to share with you what I received in my goodie bag. So uh, that's going to really be helpful uh, to those of you that are checking this podcast out on YouTube because I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to share some video and some pictures with you regarding the uh, stuff that I got in the mail. It's really great. And uh, if you uh, were hesitant maybe in purchasing this or weren't sure, uh, I think this might uh, push you over the edge to go and get it when the flash sale begins. There is a uh, trailer out for the new film, Gone in the Night. Now, the film stars Winona Ryder, John Gallagher Jr., Owen Teague, Brianne Chu, and Dermot Mulroney. Uh, Eli Horowitz co-wrote and directed the film. He is uh, also the co-creator of Homecoming. Uh, now, in the film, Kath, played by Ryder, and her boyfriend, played by Gallagher Jr., arrive at a remote cabin in the Redwoods, only to discover that a mysterious younger couple is already there. The rental has apparently been double booked, and with nowhere else to go, they decide to share the cabin with these strangers. When her boyfriend disappears with the young woman, Kath becomes obsessed with finding an explanation for their sudden breakup. But the truth is far stranger than she could have ever imagined. Again, gone in the night. You can find the trailer online. There's an interesting article on Bloody Disgusting. Uh, Jason Blum thinks that if he were to uh, get the rights to Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, he feels that he could get Robert Englund back to play Freddy Krueger one final time. Now, there was no indication that Blumhouse would be getting those rights anytime soon, but it certainly would be interesting since uh, they were able to uh, work with Universal Studios on Invisible Man and the upcoming uh, Wolfman movie. Plus, uh, of course, they have the rights to Halloween and uh, The Exorcist. So uh, if they get the rights to Nightmare on Elm Street, it would be interesting if they could get Robert Englund back. Now, of course, Englund is 75, so who knows if he is even interested in putting the makeup on one final time, but you never know, so stay tuned. Speaking of Blumhouse, their latest film, The Black Phone, has been getting some great reviews. Rotten Tomatoes is showing it at 85% uh, tomato meter. Uh, that's out of 35 reviews, so not too shabby. Uh, the film's directed by Scott Derrickson uh, of Doctor Strange fame, as well as, of course, Sinister and uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, to name a few. Uh, the film stars Ethan Hawke, Mason Thames, uh, Madeline McGraw, and Jeremy Davies. Uh, the film opens on June 24th, so uh, let's see how it does at the box office this weekend. Saban Films presents American Carnage, which will be in theaters on demand and on digital July 15th. The film is directed by Diego Halavis and written by the Halavis brothers. 
after a governor issues an executive order to arrest the children of undocumented immigrants, the newly detained youth are offered an opportunity to have their charges dropped by volunteering to provide care to the elderly. Once inside the elder care facility, the volunteers discover the governor and the facility's supervisor have cooked up a horrifyingly depraved conspiracy that endangers the young and the old in this twisted thriller comedy. Shout Factory, as always, is in the news. Child's Play 1 through 3 uh, are going to have an all-new 4K ultra-high-def debut here in North America. You can purchase the three films as standalones or as exclusive bundles, which includes uh, posters, postcards, slipcover variants, and a killer uh, Nika figure. To learn more about this, you can go to Shout Factory's website, where they are accepting pre-orders as well. Uh, I've mentioned on previous shows the uh, teaser trailer for the new film Resurrection is available. Just a reminder that that's still a case. Um, the film stars Rebecca Hall and Tim Roth and uh, is the sophomore film of Andrew Siemens, who also wrote the film. Uh, Resurrection is due out in theaters August 5th and is getting great early reviews. Uh, and if you go back a few podcasts, I, uh, I read a bunch of those on there as well if you're uh, interested in what the critics have had to say so far. Author David A. Newman has a new release out called Kaleidoscopic Shades Within Black Eternity. In the book, we follow Bob Triplo, an inventor who had relocated with his wife Sue from Adelaide, Australia to Corona, California. Bob's past, however, haunts him and is threatening to come not only for his own sanity, but is also determined to claim his son Joshua. You can find Kaleidoscopic Shades Within Black Eternity at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, and Bookshop. So in some interesting Emmy nomination news, uh, our friends Marjorie DeHay and Paul Overacker uh, have a chance to be nominated for an Emmy this year. Uh, their film, Bottle Monster, which of course they were on the show uh, about a year or so ago, maybe even longer now, I can't even remember, uh, they were on to promote. Uh, Bottle Monster is in the group of nominations for uh, Best Television Movie. <laughs> so congratulations to them. That is awesome. Uh, that's great. And uh, I wish them well. It would be awesome if they won. So uh, let's see what happens. So uh, I think this is actually in the nomination stage. So this is uh, the round to see who is in the actual nomination. And then uh, from there it would be to see who wins. But I, I hope they get the nomination. That would just be awesome. And uh, I wish them well. So I, I will keep you posted as, uh, as events uh, happen. And uh, wrapping up news, a uh, friend of the show and uh, former guest, Maureen Mo Whelan, uh, is um, doing an Indiegogo campaign for her comic book, Black River, which is published by uh, Scattered Comics. And if you want to learn more about it, uh, just go to the Indiegogo website, uh, which is indiegogo.com and you can look up black river and um, you can uh, be one of the backers for this comic uh, it's going well as of right now it looks like they have exceeded the hundred percent that they were looking for but listen uh, i'm a big fan of uh, supporting all of those in the world of independent horror and sci-fi so uh, go check it out and uh if you can support Mo uh, with her new comic book, Black River, that would be awesome. So check it out. Uh, Indiegogo, Black River comic book. Um, and you can also go back and uh, listen to my interview with Mo Whelan. Uh, it's a good one and um, very talented. Very, very talented and wish her the best with this comic book. All right. As we get into the notes portion of it, as I mentioned uh, a little while ago, um, my goodie package from In Search of Tomorrow arrived. And um, I'm going to share it with you, which is something I normally don't do. I'm a very private person, you know. And, um, well, if you're uh, listening to this right now and you want to see what it is, you could just go to uh, YouTube and look up the Graveyard Show podcast. Go to this point in the show and you'll see the video uh, suddenly appearing. Um, so as... Uh, I'm showing you right here. This is sort of the uh, group shot, I guess you could say, of what I received. Now, I believe 
the tier that I purchased was the Admiral Kirk uh, tier. And that came with the three posters, uh, the t-shirt, uh, stickers, pins, and of course the Blu-ray. And then you get the um, soundtrack download, uh, digital download, and then uh, you get a digital download for In Search of Tomorrow as well. So right here, I, uh, I put out uh, everything. And uh, like I said, it's a group shot. And um, maybe I'll switch now to the video. So as you see here, I'm not a very good camera operator. Doing the best I can here. But um, So yeah, so just trying to get you in a little closer just to kind of see what everything looks like. Uh, if you're not familiar with this um, film or the campaign, uh, you can just see the high quality here of the artwork. The posters are fantastic for this, plus the In Search of Darkness films. I mean, it's just fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, the first time we got little stickers here. Uh, so we have three stickers uh, that are smaller versions of the movie posters, and then you have the In Search of Tomorrow um, uh, sticker, and then, of course, the little uh, mini ones on the side there as well, which are really, really cool. Now, what I like are the pins. Uh, the pins here are really nice, and um, you see right here the uh, space helmet, and uh, and then you have um, the actual movie uh, pin as well. And uh, unfortunately, it, it moved around, I guess, during shipping, so it's not exactly flush. So, uh, sorry about that. I try. I did what I could to try to make it work, but it just, it just, I couldn't get it back, and I didn't want to open it up. And then here's the shirt. I can't wait to get this thing on. Um, it's really awesome. I selected the one of the uh, spaceships with uh, Elliot looking out um, over, uh, well, I guess you know, California, Southern California, and um, yeah, it's really awesome. So this is great stuff. Uh, so I let. Uh, I let uh, David Weiner and, and Robin Block know how awesome uh, it was to get all this stuff, and uh, they were really thrilled. They said the feedback they're getting is fantastic, which I'm not surprised about. I mean, between the films and the merchandise, these guys have just been hitting one home run after another. So great stuff, and uh, I highly encourage you uh, to uh, check out In Search of Darkness 1 and 2, which is still streaming on Shutter, I believe. And then, uh, again, Flash Sale coming up for In Search of Tomorrow, and that's going to be from uh, July 21st through August 7th. Don't worry, you'll be hearing a lot more about that uh, over these next few weeks as well. So check it out. Uh, 80s sci-fi doc.com is where you can go. All right. Let's uh, move on to my thoughts um, about movie posters and the art that they really are. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Lately, uh, I've been kind of in this mode of, uh, well, I've just uploaded a bunch of, you know, audio promos for podcasts. And, you know, I'm a big fan of TV spots, uh, commercials uh, for horror movies, and um, as well as trailers and, and teaser trailers and all that stuff. I just gobble that stuff up. I love it. You know, when YouTube first started, I was always on there trying to find, you know, the latest uh, horror spot for movies that, um, uh, that you know, I remember as a kid growing up. And there had been some great, great effective, uh, you know, trailers and TV spots and audio promos and stuff like that. But certainly one of the great art forms is movie posters. And this is a, a subject that I've mentioned a few times on the program over the years. Back in uh, 2000, I think it was 2009, when I had um, Stacy Ponder on the program, blogger, podcaster, uh, writer. Um, we, we talked about a lot of different subjects. And one of the things I really wanted to talk to her about was her love for movie posters. Because on her blog, Final Girl... She had, uh, there was a one day of the week where she would post all these different movie posters. And sometimes it would be a, a bunch from maybe one movie and it would be maybe some of the, you know, um, U.S. versions and then international versions of the posters. And then there'd be other weeks where she would post just, you know, a cluster of movies, different movies. And um, there's just so many great um, pieces of art when you look at great movie posters you know used to mean 
something uh, when you would see these things. You know, you look at like Raiders of the Lost Ark movie poster or, you know, Jaws, of course, or, you know, Star Wars or Earthquake or the Towering Inferno or any of the James Bond movies. And, you know, there's just something about them that when you look at them, they're just such great pieces of art. And, you know, it would convey what, you know, the movie might be. It could be something as simple as like Creepshow 2 or Creepshow. I just said Creepshow 2 because it just came across my uh, my computer screen. So, yeah, I mean, Halloween 3, uh, you know, it, it's really interesting. Night of the Living Dead, um, you know, the Friday the 13th series, the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series, when you're talking horror, the fog. I'm just kind of scrolling down. I was I really didn't even do a true search on this thing. And like all these awesome movie posters are popping up, shining. I mean, some of them are just so simplistic. Uh, here's here's a sick one for Jason Lives. Now, I don't know if this is legit or if this is a fan-made uh, poster because nowadays, you know, everybody does these great, you know, remakes of uh, reimagining of movie posters. But, you know, it's just incredible to me when you, when you look at so many of these and it's this lost art. And I remember when I was talking with Stacy on the podcast, and you can actually find this interview in the Graveyard Show classics that are available right now. And we were talking about the lost art of movie trailers. And she brought up a really interesting point uh, that when you got into the 90s and you had the uh, Scream movie poster that uh, came out, basically it was, you know, the actors. It wasn't even like telling you anything, right? And she was talking about how, you know, suddenly uh, the movie poster went from being uh, about the movie to about who's in the movie. And it's really interesting because when you kind of look after that, I mean, certainly with the Scream posters, you know, it's always the actors that are in the movie uh, as opposed to looking at something like maybe Misery or maybe, um, you know, you can name any of them, Dawn of the Dead, The Exorcist. So I found that very interesting because even Halloween H2O did the same thing. Now, granted, I, uh, it was Miramax, so, you know, it would, it would stand to reason that it would follow the same sort of formula. But it's kind of interesting. You know, it's like H2O has probably one of the more, you know, movie posters <laughs> in the Halloween series. Especially when you compare it to, like, three, um, you know, I mean, I guess they've all been kind of pretty tame, but, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I, I was trying to think about some movie posters that I've seen recently that have kind of, you know, made an imprint on me, and it's weird because I had to kind of go back to, like, 2008 with The Dark Knight, and and I don't think it's, a like, a awesome movie poster. I think it's a, I think it's a really good movie poster, and it... And it, it kind of shows you, it, it gives you everything you need to know in it. Um, I don't know if it's one of my favorite movie posters. It's kind of iconic, I guess, at this stage. But, um, and then kind of, I went down the rabbit hole. Batman has had some really bad movie posters. <laughs> um, the original run with Michael Keaton, like it was just the bat symbol or, you know, Batman's bat symbol on his, on his, uh, on his suit. And then it went from that to, you know, sort of the same thing for Batman Returns and then you know we just kept going down you know uh, with um, with the third and fourth Batman film Batman Forever and Batman and Robin is just kind of like all about you know the bat symbol it was very I don't know very uninspired but I, I think that that might have been the first movie series that actually featured individual posters for the cast of characters if I'm not mistaken, I, I want to say that it was, and it might have been Batman Returns. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, 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 I could have sworn that that was like the first real marketing done 
where you had individual posters, one that featured Danny DeVito, one that featured Michael Keaton, uh, one that featured Michelle Pfeiffer, and then it kind of grew out of that with Kilmer and uh, Chris O'Donnell and then Nicole Kidman. And then, you know, of course, everybody does it now with, you know, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and, uh, you know, Twilight and all this other stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's right. But, yeah, the Batman, the original Batman series from 89 to, like, what, 95? Yeah, it was pretty uninspired <laughs> movie posters. But I guess they didn't really have to, right? You knew what you were getting and you were going to go anyway. It wasn't like the movie poster for Batman was going to get me to go see it any quicker than I did. I mean, I, I was there for midnight showing back when those were you know, not even a common occurrence. But um, getting back to um, reeling it back uh, to um, horror and sci-fi, I'm just wondering, is there anything that comes to your mind that stands out as far as like a new... Uh, movie poster that kind of stands out. Uh, I just, for me, it's, I don't know. I, th- I'm, I think, it's, you know, I think some of this might have to do with the fact that we might, you know, because we're living in this digital world now where you just go on sites and you just kind of skip around. You go, okay, what about what's here? What's playing here? Okay. And you just kind of skip through stuff. And this goes for music too. Um, you know, you, you're, you go on a streamer and it's just kind of like, all right, well, what do we have? And, if you go to these free horror movie streaming sites or, you know, where you get a lot of free horror movies, have you noticed that a lot of the newer ones, you know, and I put new in quotes, maybe like the last 10 years, that, um, you know, they all kind of look alike. Like they all kind of have that same sort of horror character that's sort of like screaming at the viewer or, you know, they all kind of look like the same zombie or they all have like the hand that's like up on the wall, like or, or on, a, on a mirror or on a window or something. And they all have that same color of red for blood. And, like it's just, it looks like it was done in the same place, just done like 50 or 100 times with a slight difference. Um, yeah. You know, speaking of streaming music, it was funny because the other day I was talking to a, a colleague and I was telling him I was listening to the, the, the latest Def Leppard. Um, release, which which is great, and I was enjoying it, and and he said to me, um, so who produced it? Uh, uh. And I realized that because I was streaming it, I had no vinyl or CD to go to that you normally would back in the day, and you know you had it, you turned it around, it had all the information on there, so you knew who it was. And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> So, you know, again, streaming world, very interesting. Uh, you know, it just, I, I guess, I guess we're just in this new time where, you know, you, you really don't need a lot of the stuff anymore, like the radio spots that, that used to be, or um, again, TV spots. It's, 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 I guess it's getting more and more simplified, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But I highly encourage you uh, to check out stuff on YouTube. You can always type in horror uh, TV spots or, uh, horror radio spots and you know if you if you've never heard or seen these things really check it out they're, they're really I mean there's some great stuff that you can find out there and some really effective stuff as well uh, but I would love to hear your thoughts um, you can uh, drop me a line at gyspodcast at gmail.com the graveyard show podcast is available everywhere podcasts exist and uh, as I've mentioned the show is also available on YouTube just search for graveyard show podcast and of course i wanted to invite you to join me on my latest endeavor catacombs of horror it can be found on the graveyard show podcast youtube channel it is a video production that i produce exclusively for online content and there are currently uh three videos you can catch Uh, what best represents 1980s horror favorite scenes from Count Yorga Vampire and the latest edition is about my favorite scenes and the missed opportunity from Halloween 4 the return of Michael Myers and I also discuss why I think H4 is the most important movie in the series after the original that's Catacombs of Horror which uh, you can find the link on the Graveyard Show Podcast's YouTube channel there is a link for the new YouTube channel for Catacombs of Horror you can go on there as well And uh, I have a very small playlist on the Graveyard Show podcast, which contains uh, 80s horror and uh, Count Yorga. But you can find those as well on Catacombs of Horror's YouTube channel. 
If you know anyone who is a fan of horror, please invite them to enter the graveyard. New listeners and friends are always welcome. In the meantime, my friends, um, I'm going to, uh, well, clean up this large mess that's been here since uh, I've been away. And, uh, you know, I love Lawrence. He's a great werewolf. He's a great head of security here. He's a great DJ, as we found out previously on uh, some of the shows. And he certainly knows his way around an archive room. But caretaker, not his thing. And I say that because he's not here. And if he is, I'm just going to... Yeah, no, he's not here. Okay, good. You, you don't want to make him mad. Yeah, not what I'm going to do. So I'm only going to push my luck so far. But anyway, uh, let me get back to work uh, cleaning up all this mess around here. And uh, working on... Uh, a whole bunch of new interviews coming your way as well. Uh, I will hopefully get those to you sooner than later. And as you exit the graveyard, I would like to remind you to please lock the gate behind you. We wouldn't want anyone to get out. Until next time. Uh...